Hi, this is Chris Strong with Rapid Scan 3D. Today we're going to show you the Artec Micro. This is a new structured light system from the Artec group. Uh, the scanner here is ideal for scanning small objects. So if you're scanning some medium to larger objects, you might be better suited with the Artec Space Fighter, Eva, or Leo. But this one is excellent for scanning small objects. Uh, typically around 324 cubic centimeters is the ideal volume that we can scan in. Uh, accuracy wise, we're looking around 10 microns and so 0.01 millimeter with about 29 micron resolution. Uh, what's great about this scanner that it has a two axis turntable, so it has a tilt and rotation, so it's able to scan automated and we can capture a lot of data without having to move the part or move a scanner. Uh, so we'll go ahead and show you the scanner right now. Go ahead and go through the hardware and software. And if you have any questions, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us. So let's go ahead and show you the scanner. All right, so this is Artec Studio 14. On the left-hand side, you'll see the part we're scanning. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the brightness here. We want a little red to be shown, so you'll see it on the shoulder. Then we'll go ahead and pick the size of the object we're scanning. So if we do large or small objects, we'll just do small normal, and then scanning at high resolution. Also, we're not doing any texture cal uh, capturing, so let's just go ahead and worry about capturing the data on the part. All right, so on the bottom right, we have the Artec Micro Scanner. You'll notice that the part on the turntable has a tilt and rotation access, so we'll be able to scan 100% around the part. On the user, user interface, you'll notice that we have a gray circle that has a red area that keeps on uh, being filled in. So after each scan, this will give us a visual of how many scans are left. So when we're scanning a larger object, we'll have more frames that we capture uh, than we do on the smaller object. Also before we had an option that would show complex or normal. So here we're just scanning uh, small normal. So this has a minimal amount of frames we're going to capture. So right now we're about 25% of the way through, as you notice with the red circle. So the Artec Micro, like we said before, has a 6.4 megapixel camera. Um, it's using blue light technology compared to maybe what you've seen in some other scanners that might use lasers or white light. Uh, the blue structure light system does allow us to scan some shinier objects and some black objects, which are typically two of the hardest parts to scan. Uh, what we really like about this system is that it's pretty much automated. Uh, you can attach the part to the turntable and basically just click scan. Uh, with this part we're just using some blue putty. Um, you can use some uh, tack uh, that you might just get from the local store from Museum Wax. That will help to hold the part on. Um, also the system comes with some fixtures. So there's multiple ways to fixture the part. Um, you'll notice on the turntable there's a couple, there's about four silver um, areas where we could actually screw in some fixtures. If the part is a little bit heavier um, than the tack will hold, we can definitely fixture down the part. Also on this scan session, we're only scanning the top part. Um, not really important to scan the bottom as it will be flat. Um, of course, we won't capture it um, on this part. We're not too worried about it. Um, I'll show you in the software what we'll do is we'll actually go in there and fill that hole or that area that we didn't capture so that it's completely flat.
Also, you'll notice that there is a area that we are kind of geared to scanning on that scanner. So this is really good for scanning small parts. Um, if you're looking to scan something a little bit larger, maybe you see that uh, hand uh, to the right on the bottom of the screen. Um, that part won't fit in here. So Artec has a whole line of other scanners. Uh, the Artec Space Fighter would be excellent for that hand for scanning objects about 18 inches by 18 inches and smaller. If you need to scan some larger objects, we have the Artec Eva or the Artec Leo. Those are both handheld scanners from Artec. Uh, those are good for scanning everything around 12 by 12 inches and larger. So we've scanned people, we scan cars with it, uh, larger machine equipment. Uh, those are great for that scanning. Um, we also have the Artec Ray. Artec Ray is a long range scanner which can scan up to about 110 meters. Um, so if you want to scan cars or buildings, um, you can definitely use it with that, with that scanner. All right, so we're just finishing up our last scan here. Uh, so you'll notice now that we have a uh, full 360. So let's go ahead and close out of here. Um, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go and erase some of that data that we need to get out of here. So we do have a flat area, uh, which the software would be really good for scanning uh, or cleaning up the cutoff plane or base selection, but it does have some areas that are not too great. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight the part in red. Normally that's what we would want to delete, but I'm just going to inverse it, which means I'm going to delete everything else around it. There's still some surrounding area that I'd like to delete out. So one of my favorite tools is the lasso tool. So lasso tool, you can kind of just um, lasso around the area and just delete the data. Uh, there are other uh, options there. So we have a 2D selection, a 3D selection, and a rectangle selection. I'm more hands-on and interactive with uh, post-processing, so I do like this lasso selection. So let's go ahead and erase that data. Uh, looks like we have a little bit more. Um, that I missed, so let's go ahead and clean that up. Perfect. So I'm just going to click out of here, um, then we'll go into the tool section. Um, the software already does a rough registration, five registration for us, so here we're just going to do a global. It's using the geometry. Um, you'll notice on the top right there are uh, 48 loaded frames. So what it's doing, it's utilizing uh, those 48 frames and doing a best fit based off the geometry of the part. On the bottom, uh, we have a uh, bar that lets us know the, how long the process is going. Uh, so it gives us a, just an estimate of where we are. So right now we've just finishing up the second of the 202 and files done. I uh, noticed some data here that I did not collect so let's go back into that uh, eraser tool. And just lasso around and delete that data. All right. So the next process we'll do, uh, we'll actually go ahead and create the mesh. Um, I'm utilizing the sharp fusion functionality. Um, we can fill by radius here manually or watertight by filling holes. So by default, the setting is set to fill holes by certain radius. You can turn that off. That's not an issue. So if you do not want to fill holes, basically what you do is you click the manual selection. Uh, we also have a watertight selection as well for uh, creating a watertight mesh. So you'll notice here um, we have a couple of fusions. Uh, we have a sharp fusion and a smooth fusion. Uh, smooth fusion is really good for uh, smoothing out data once you're creating the mesh. So it does kind of clean it up. It smooths out data so you do lose some of that resolution. Um, so you probably wouldn't want to do it on this part. So here I would definitely go with the sharp fusion. Sharp fusion is excellent for any type of engineering or if you're looking to capture data with high resolution and have sharp edges. 
So for the Artec Micro, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to go ahead with the Sharp Fusion. So here we're almost done with the uh, process. Probably just going to be just about a couple seconds. That sound means it's done. So with the Sharp Fusion, we had that uh, fill by radius, so we did uh, collector. It did extend the boundaries on that um, area on the bottom. But that's no problem. I'm just going to go back into my eraser, use the rectangle selection, and delete it out. I'm going to rotate it just to make sure. Uh, there's a little area here I want to delete as well. So I'm just going to position and uh, delete some of the more of that data. Also, we could have done a base selection, just move the whole bond if we wanted to, but really I just want to get that area done. So we'll go into uh, our next one, which is fill holes. I'm going to select the hole that's filled. You'll see that green highlight around the hole, and then we just go ahead and fill it. So boom, there's a nice flat area. Uh, it's a watertight mesh. Um, so this is great for, um, you know, we can export this out in, as a STL. Uh, we can send it to a 3D printer. We can send it into modeling software like GeoMagic uh, to create CAD-ready files or solid models. Uh, but the file is basically all done. You can definitely see some nice resolution. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us at info at rapidscan3d.com or you can call us directly at 562-912-3544. Again, this is Chris Strong with Rapid Scan 3D. Thank you for joining us.